For round number two, this story has been popping off on Twitter because it is so impressive. You read the headline and you it sounds like a movie. It sounds like mm-hmm. it can't be true because soldier self-amputates leg to aid battle buddies. That's unbelievable. Self-amputate. What was that movie? 100, 127 hours. 127 hours where the guy takes off his arm in the cave right. and whatever. And, and you're like. James Franco. I thought yeah. you guys were going to say 101 Dalmatians and I wasn't going to understand the connection at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. You know 101 Dalmatians when the puppy solves off it. When but they I, go up to Corello the villain, they're like, you better get, get out. out. <laughs> well, this is a story of, I mean, and looking at the pictures of, well, I'll tell the story first. But uh, a a year after the loss of his leg, specialist Ezra Mays is still amazed at the circumstances that led to his survival. And if you ask, he'll credit this survival to a uniform belt, his smartphone, and shockingly good cell phone service. And long story short, he's overseas uh, and he's in Poland for a joint training mission called Atlantic Resolve. And he was the loader for the main cam- cannon of an Abrams tank. And cons, you've worked around your artillery. You've worked mm-hmm. around these things are beastly yeah i was a uh, in a paladin unit but i've been around abrams tanks they're huge 65 they're impressive tons yes yeah so they are done for the day it's been a week-long rotation they've been out in the field they're exhausted they have a little bit of downtime so he's in this tank uh Maze is in the tank with two others from his unit and they fall asleep in the tank there's i, I imagine it's big in there i've actually never it's been not, in one it's not big at all no no it's super no, tiny they're really cramped oh, very really? confined so, space. They're, cramped. so yes. they're in there's three of them they must have found little nooks and crannies yep. for downtime and they fell asleep in the tank but the tank was like parked on a hill and i guess unfortunately and it's night starting to fall it's dark out the brakes give way there was a leak in the fluid the brake fluid mm-hmm. i guess and so he feels it start to move. He thinks his buddy, he wakes up, he feels the tank starting to roll. He wakes up his buddy and he's like, stop the tank, stop the tank. The guy says, I can't. Um, it, it's, it's not working. It's like something's totally fucked. Mm-hmm. The tank reached nearly 90 miles an hour. Yeah. And 65 just, tons. For context, in Abrams, top speed, if you're just cruising on pavement, is 45. So yeah. you're doing I mean, twice that. think about that. the fastest you could possibly go. Like, you can go 85 on the highway from between Austin and San Antonio. Right. I, I feel uncomfortable when my F-250s going that fast. Right. Yeah. And now 65 tons. Yeah. yeah. 65 tons going almost 90 miles an hour, they Dangerous. estimated in the after in the after report. They crashed into an embankment full speed, and Mays was thrown from the tank, his leg catching in the turret gear. He then felt the full force of the tank, 65 mm. tons, all putting all this pressure on the turret sliding onto his leg. And in the moment, you can imagine how confused you'd be, how disoriented right. you'd be. He's laying there and he's like, I think my leg's maybe broken. He's not thinking too much. And he hears Sergeant Crump, the gunner, and he hears her above him and she's bleeding out. She has a cut from her thigh. She's bleeding out. She's calling out for help. And the driver, PFC Alamo, is pinned in the front with a broken back. So they're all screwed. They're all kind of stuck right now. And so he's Which put, is just shocking that they're even alive. That yeah. they're shocking that they're alive. Crazy. Unbelievable. So he hears them calling for help, and he's pushing and pulling. He's trapped. He's pinned by the leg. And he's tr- pulling so hard to get out, to get himself out. This is the line right here. He says, I pushed and pulled at my leg as hard as I could to get loose and felt a sharp tear. I thought I had dislodged my leg, but when I moved away... My leg was completely gone. There must have been just obviously so much adrenaline pumping through him to where he just thought, okay, I got my leg dislodged, when in fact he amputated his leg. Right. He Crazy. Pushed so hard. So freed from the pressure of the turret, now the blood's pouring out at an alarming rate, but he knows he has other people to save. He pushes that all aside. He pulls away, goes back into the tank, has the presence of mind to grab a tourniquet and a medical kit, Halfway there, he starts to get lightheaded, and he knows. He, again, presence of mind, I'm going into shock. So he takes the steps. Do you guys remember what the steps to treat shock are? I forget what the... Uh, what uh, treat, never keep, keep. Treat, never keep, keep. <laughs> but your memory just blows me away. Mm-hmm. You, but yeah, stay calm. Keep your heart rate down. Elevator. So he does all this stuff. He puts a tourniquet on himself. Then he finds uh, Crump. She has put a tourniquet on herself, too, which in the heat of the moment, I mean, pretty impressive thing to do. Um, so... She goes to radio for help. They're helping each other out now. The radio doesn't work. Of course. Situation normal, all fucked up. But that is when they hear Maze's cell phone ringing. So the cell phone is the only one. His is the only one that didn't get broken in the crash. And it's the only one with cell phone service. So with one leg cut and the other broken, 
Crump, Sergeant Crump, she crawls to reach Maze's phone and throws it down to him. He unlocks it and sends his friend a text message for help, and help was on the way. That's kind of crazy to me that he sent a text as opposed to calling someone. Probably, I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm not criticizing the guy because, yes, it was a crazy situation. It was very harrowing, but that's but just But nobody wants to get a phone call. Yeah, like people you just don't ignore. Want to. Right. Yeah, you, true. You're right, though. You yeah. check hey, that's text, a, but you all don't. Right, you know what? That's a great point. I yeah. ignore a phone call. I'm going to read every text I ever get. And this last foot, this is crazy, but his last memory of that location of that incident is his sergeant major running up the hill carrying his leg on his soldier. Um, and he said, I wanted to keep it and see if we could reattach, but it was pulverized. Um, it turns out May had also broken his other ankle on his remaining leg, his pelvis in three places, his shoulder, and was rushed to a local hospital where he spent four months in intensive care. And he says, I feel super lucky. My whole crew does. So many things could have gone wrong. But besides my leg, we all walked away pretty unscathed. Unreal. Yeah. I would be such a miserable. And for what the like a, <laughs> besides my leg, that's pretty important. Yeah, pretty that's a impo- significant pretty life change. Yeah. I've been to crying about leg. my cold, my sniffles for the last <laughs> five episodes on this show. Yeah, so and now you I knock feel like off? a little bitch. I know. Now I feel like a <laughs> oh, Maze is making me feel real bad. And before everybody reaches out, yes, we will definitely try to get him on the show. Yeah, like, sure. I we mean, definitely what? will. And in all the photos, he's, there's these photos of him at physical therapy He's got a huge, he's in Texas now doing a recovery. He wants to spend all his energy now learning how to put prosthetics on other people. Yeah. And it's the future he wants. So this if anybody so knows him, he's probably at the hospital that I go to. Probably. Yeah. He's probably there like at Bamson. Well, you think they would have brought him, did they bring him back stateside? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then I mean, he's if, he's, if he's back in Texas. Then, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, did, so I missed that part. Yes, I then, would yeah. imagine that he's at Bamson because that is, probably. has like taken the place of Walter Weed as like the premier recovery hospital right. just unbelievable but, perspective on this kid too at 21 years of age to have this positive outlook yeah and just to have done everything he did in the face of this adversity and this complete danger when everybody could have died yeah and, and i want to point this out to parents before we move on to round three stop telling people to stay off their phones yeah. Having his phone with him saved his life. Yeah, you're right. So, <laughs> so stop, stop being telling so your soldiers and yeah. your Marines and your sailors to stay off their phones. So anybody that's somebody... telling all their troops to keep their phones back at the base whenever you're going on a training mission, first of all, how dare you? How mm. dare you how get out? You need you. to get. But he says in the end, he says his cell phone saved his life, and then he doesn't plan on switching his phone service anytime soon because whatever service he was using, and it sure as shit probably wasn't T-Mobile. I'm just nope. saying. Just probably throwing wasn't it out there. T-Mobile, PCS. Uh, but uh, it saved his life that cricket. he had a couple bars. and yeah, it's cricket, cricket. It was Cricket Wireless, it was cricket actually. Wireless. Is what I he think had. I sold him the Yo, phone. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had one NCO. I swear to God, this guy had a different phone number every two weeks because he couldn't keep up with his phone bills. So he'd just go to different carriers every two weeks, get Brilliant. a new phone, new phone number. I could never get in touch with the guy. I have a buddy like that, too, where every single time, like I can, I just know when he's calling me, but it's from a different number every yeah. time. I don't even have his contacts safe because I know he just goes through phones. That's ridiculous. All right, let's move on to round number three. 